And another time he said, did you bring some entertainment? And he said, I want to show the Jews and the Christians that we have some room in our religion for entertainment. In other words, we're not always preoccupied with these things because if you do that, the Prophet ﷺ said, he talked about the munbit, the one that continually works and never takes recreation. And then he said, لَا ظَهْرًا أَبْقَى وَلَا أَرْضًا قَطَعًا He will not have a back to hold him up. After a while, he'll get so burnt out that he, he's, he can't continue on what he was doing. And he will not get to the land that he's trying to get to. وَلَا أَرْضًا قَطَعًا You see, in other words, if you beat your camel without stopping to give it rest. That's, that's what he was talking about in the hadith. When you're traveling, if you just keep beating that camel, trying to get to your destination, you're going you're gonna to eventually destroy the camel. And then you're stuck in the middle of the desert, right, with looking at this animal that you took it to that state because you didn't stop to give it water, to let it graze, to recreate. I mean, recreate's a beautiful word in English, to recreate. Right? To renew. So we need renewal. But if you make the world a recreation, right? If, if you just turn it into this pastime where what you're using it for is to preoccupy you about questions of ultimate concern, which I talked about last week. Right? Those, those are the questions of ultimate concern. Where did you come from? Where are you going? Who are you? What's your purpose? What happens after you die? These are the questions that you should not be using the world to preoccupy you from being concerned about. Because if you do, you're going to, uh, you're going to have very uh, big awakening, a rude awakening. Wazinatun. And it's zina. Now what is zina? Zina are things that when you see them, they please the eye. Now, the amazing thing about life is if you see a beautiful car, there, there's people look. That's why a lot of people have beautiful cars. Because they like, the, why do they put that armor all on the tires? Right? Why do they do that? They're in the car. They can't see the tires. Why are they doing that? Because they, they want that zena. They want other people's eyes to look at it. That's the real goal, is look at me. Now, if that becomes your life, and for many people it is, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. If you can afford them, and if they're not, if gaining those nice things does not prevent you from fulfilling your other obligations, because Allah has a world in which he made some people wealthy, some people poor, and he likes to see athar and ni'mati ala abdi. He likes to see traces of those blessings on his servant. But the Muslims had a very interesting phenomenon. If you go into a Muslim city, a traditional city, the Muslims never made their houses beautiful on the outside. Never. Why didn't they do that? Because they did not want people to look with envy. They saved it for the inside. So if you go into a house in Morocco, outside it looks like this old, about to fall apart. And then you go inside and it's this incredible palace. And the reason they did that is because, first of all, the people that they invite to their house are their friends. That's who you invite into your house, people that you know. that you And generally, those people are not envious of you. Those, those are people that care about you. And that's why when you go into a house, you're supposed to say, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. And that's what Imam Madik had on his door. He put it on his door to remind people to say that when they came in, because Imam Madik was amazing. And he didn't want people to go in and say, Imam Madik's amazing. Without having said, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah, right? As a protection, because you can harm people in ways that you don't even know. So the zina is, it's in malbas, it's in markab, right? It's al mal, al mal wal banuna, zina tul hayat al dunya. Wealth, 
and children are the zina. Because when, if somebody sees your children, you've got beautiful children, mashallah. Yasurra nadirin. It's something that the eye is pleased to see. It's the bounty of Allah. So in protecting yourself from those, there are things that you do. One is don't become extravagant. Don't make other people become envious of it. And one, one of the things that this country around the world is because it puts the outward is so emphasized, the world does look on it with a lot of envy. I mean, there is a lot of envy. And envy, the, the interesting thing about envy is envy is that quality of the heart that no one will admit. A person will admit a felonious crime before they'll admit to being envious. You'll never find anybody admit to, I, I'm actually envious of that person. That's why I dislike them so much. So envy is actually a type of flattery. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu di ni'matin mahsud. Everyone who has a blessing will have somebody who envies him for that blessing. And in one dua, Sayyidina Ali kathar Allah min husadik. May Allah increase your enviers. And what it meant was, may Allah increase your blessings. So envy is a very strange phenomenon. And it's related to this zina. People envy what they see. And that's why in, in, in English, envy comes from invidio, which is a bad look. It's to look. They call it mal ojo, you know, mal ojo, the evil eye. It's looking with a bad eye. It's looking at somebody. And it's related to the word uh, hasasa. Hasada has a relationship to the word of, of sensing or, or seeing. Zina tun bainakum. Now, the thing about zina is you begin. Once you get into that stage of life where you try to have these things, then it becomes tafakhur, right? You're going to have this mutual boasting, al-hakum mutakathuru, accumulating wealth has, has, has you, al-hakum, it's lahu, preoccupied you, hatta zurtum al-maqabir, until you visit your graves. Right? In other words, you get so caught up in this dunya, you forget where you're really going, which is your grave. And that, this mutual trying to get all this stuff can become a very dangerous preoccupation. Tafakhurun bainakum. Wa takathurun. Firamwadi. Wa awdad. And then you vie with one another, having more children, more wealth. Right? And this becomes a sickness. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said to Ammar, he said, La tahsan ala dunya, ya Ammar. Don't get depressed about this world. There's, I mean, there's so many verses in the Quran, don't get depressed. And that's why Muslims should take to heart that depression is not a quality that a believer should accept. Uh, the Quran should free you from depression. And, and the Prophet asked that it be the habu hammi wa ghammi, you know, wa huzni, wa jira wa huzni, that the remover of my depression, right? That you shouldn't get depressed. I mean, there's people that get depressed, but it's really. Depression, I think at the root of a lot of depression is self-indulgence because people aren't serving. If you're actually out serving people, it will actually free you of those feelings of depression. Uh, the best Prozac is to go out and just uh, feed people, go work with Rahima or something like that. Right? Seriously, go and feed people. Don't be so self-indulgent. Because a lot of depression, I mean, there are, and, and, and I accept this, that there are some imbalances that people have. And depression can get into a cycle because there are chemical imbalances. But I think before you go that route, you should definitely try other means because people can be clinically depressed where you have these deep endogenous types of depression. And there can be exogenous depression. I mean, some people really do have very difficult lives outwardly. Allah gives them great tribulation and that can cause a depression and it becomes a little bit for somebody to say, come on, snap out of it. It's difficult because it's difficult to appreciate people's states like that. So, but generally there's a lot of people that don't really have those type of reasons and they get into that self-indulgent state uh, which is very unhealthy.